What up, YouTube? Melder on here on a uh, another vlog. I decided to do another one. Uh, I kind of liked it, and um, seeing that you guys also liked it too. So I have a special vlog topic today. Um, so I I try not to. I try to use off the cuff because I think it's more of a realistic experience. But I did make notes on this one because I think I had to to make it more structured. And it's something. It's a topic that's been on my mind. And I, you know, with these vlog series, what they're intentionally for is for me getting stuff off the top of my head because like if it sits there I just can't stop thinking about it and then I can't get other things done and I don't like doing that so um, this is my lab by the way this is my uh, this is my lab I work in uh, there's some racks over here this is a CO2 canister you're looking at right here <laughs> so you're like what the hell is Meldron doing anyway uh, I used it to put my flies to sleep um, yeah, not like putting your dog to sleep. Like actually putting him to sleep so I can move him around. Anyway, so today's topic is going to be um, life lessons from Classic WoW. And I think, you know, you're going to think uh, it's a game, right? How can a game teach me anything? But I think that's, that's the whole point of what a good game is, right? So how do you consider what a good game is? Um... Is it replayability? Is it action? Is it like, you know, the quests, the lore, the storyline? And I'd argue that a good game um, teaches you something about yourself or the world uh, and lets you grow in some way. Now, of course, you're going to say, like, how's Counter Strike Go going to let me, or, or a game like that going to let me grow in a certain way? It could be genre specific, but epic games, MMORPGs, I think have a special unique ability to teach us things um, and it's a really cool way it's a cool uh, medium for like everyone calls it a social experiment right so why do they say that and that's the thing so it, it does teach us a lot of things and it teaches other people about the people who play it uh, of course this corrupted blood incident if you know what that is that was used by epidemiologists to study um, how diseases can spread in the population anyway so, um, and what this is going to focus on is the classic era of WoW. I'm sure other people use that term, but if uh, it's a term that I've kind of just created, and I'm sure it's been reused. So the classic era to me is Vanilla, the Burning Crusade, and at least parts are all of Wrath of Lich King, depending on your, your feeling about that. You know, when LFG was introduced, it kind of... But definitely, the world was still the classic world, so I would call it the classic era of WoW. But primarily vanilla, okay, we're going to be talking about. Doesn't mean that it's only in vanilla. And I think it's either it's either been wiped away from the game currently, these, these lessons I'm going to talk about, or they've been greatly diminished. So, um, if, I'm going to be looking this way to look at my notes. So, um, the first one um, is, you know, well, not the first one, before we get to the points, is that it leads to the fact, is this just a game? Um, and I, myself... Myself and other people have argued that it's not. It's it's a lifestyle choice and, and it's and it's an experience. So that's what you know. It's not just a game for many, 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 many people. It has become a game. It has become a game, but it wasn't always a game. It was an experience. So the first point I like to talk about is um, the first lesson I've learned from Vanilla WoW or Classic WoW is to take it easy. What do I mean by take it easy? You know, I would, if you've ever played Mop. A lot of the pandas, the NPCs, if you click on them, they'll say, slow down. Which is funny, because Pandaria was like the opposite of vanilla, and everything was very fast-paced. But, but slow down, right? What do I mean by that? Vanilla was a grind, right? And life itself isn't a race. It's, it's a slow process where you continually learn, make mistakes, and, you know, just like World of Warcraft is. So... The first lesson that I learned was to take things slowly, don't rush through it, enjoy the moment, um, live in the moment. This is a lot of from Eastern uh, um, uh, philosophy brought into these these points. Again, these probably weren't on the minds of the designers, but it, it's 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 interesting how a game can teach you these things. Is, is it slow down, relax? Life isn't a race. Um, you have to pick yourself up and try again when things don't work your way. You know, when you die in a group. In current retail, a lot of people will leave that group. If you wipe in vanilla, most people, not all, most people will get themselves up, give it another shot. 
give it three shots, give it five shots. And that's how life is, man. Life isn't always going to go your way. Things are going to happen. You're going to be sad. You're going to be angry. Things are people are going to die. Uh, but you got to pick yourself up and keep going. I mean, this is this is a this is not this is this is you know, unfortunately or fortunately, there is suffering in this world. But suffering will lead you to uh, becoming a better player in the in, in the game, right? So, we're, so I'm trying to correlate life with Warcraft. And there's a lot more parallels between the two things you can make. Because Classic WoW, in my opinion, mirrors life a lot. Um, because it's, it's an unforgiving environment, just like life is. You know, there's you can't go out and shoot up a bunch of heroin, right? You can't do it. Uh, you could, but you're going to you're gonna reap the repercussions of that, right? So, same kind of thing. You can't go out and just um, start poking at level 60 elites. You're going to die, right? <laughs> So that's just how it is. And that's number one. The second thing I learned from Classic WoW is to put myself out there. <clears throat> and this is the social aspect of the game. In Legion, you can do most things without interacting with anyone. You can get to level 110, right? 110 without doing a dungeon. You can get to level 110 without doing professions. Or have enough money. To, you won't have to worry about money, right? Um, you, can, you can get there without interacting with anyone. Really, it's become a single-player game, really, with people walking around, this is kind of what happened. So, as a new Vanilla of WoW player, or as a player back then, you had to come out of your comfort zone. For me, it was the first MMO experience I ever had. And I was never socially awkward, but a lot of people are, right? And this is, a, I think it's a great way for people, whether they're socially awkward or not, to get themselves out there and make that leap um, and talk to people. Because in Vanilla WoW, you can't do many things by yourself. You can't do everything by yourself, I should say that. There are a lot of things that require forming groups, forming friendships, um, and that's a very important thing that was lost in the newer aspects of the game, and it taught me, at least improved my ability to become uh, a social person. And again, I wasn't one of those people that had a problem with that, however, but it definitely didn't hurt. So that's something that I would like to point out. Um, so the game forces you to interact, right? And it's not always a good interaction, of course, right? But just like life, you can't go around and talk to people and say, hey, you know, blah, 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 how's it going? People are going to have a bad day and not want to talk to you. Same thing happens in Warcraft. And it lets you, um, if you see it in the game, you see it, you know, it mirrors in your, in your own personal life. I mean, like, people aren't, don't have to be nice to you. People can ninja loot. People can leave your group. People can call you names in the game. It happens in real life. And I think <clears throat> um, the current culture is we've insulated ourselves by, by at least we've cut off the actual social aspect and we've done all our socialization online. I'm not saying that that isn't, you know, uh, I think you need both. You need a healthy mixture of both. Um, but I know a lot of people that Warcraft actually helped them come out of their shell. Um, because you have to form you have to form these lasting relationships unlike some, some games where you like log in and call people names on a team speak or whatever like CSGO is cancerous sometimes you go in there but this is you know if you want to be in a guild if you want to get things done you got to be cordial you got to be cordial with people so okay so and the last point of that is diversity on the social aspect is that a lot of people grow up in areas that you're, you're in a monoculture monoculture where you have this people of the same culture same religious background and WoW kind of forces you to, to maybe talk to people who have different, total different experiences that you do. So it kind of, you know, kind of helps you. The anonymity um, that you have in a game, I think Vanilla WoW forces the anonymity to come off in layers over time. Whereas most games, you can have that anonymity forever. Whereas Vanilla WoW, in order to really be successful in the game, those layers of anonymity have to come off, especially if you're in a guild. So point three. Um, what goes around comes around. This is another lesson that I've learned from Vanilla WoW. Um, again, reinforced lessons. Okay, I, I kind of, this stuff mirrors in real life, but it kind of reinforces itself in, in WoW. Um, you know, I'm not sure if there's an actual physical or not, or phenomenon called karma, if it actually is a real thing, but it feels that way when you play WoW. If I see someone about to die, I give them a heal from my shaman. If I see someone having prob prob problems killing a mob, I'll go put it in a swing or two with with something or a frostbolt. Give them a hand, if, especially if it's a tough time they're having. Buff people. 
if some if, if somebody asks me for food or water as a mage, I'm like, here you go, dude. You know, if they give me a tip, I'll take it, but I'll never say you have to tip me, right? Because what goes around comes around. You know how many times I've been in situations where I'm about to die and someone saves my ass? A paladin comes over and lay on hands me or something, you know, something like that. It, it, it happens a lot. But it's not just karma. It's not, a, it's not a phenomenon. It's also a real thing. Because, at least back then, when server populations were a lot lower, your name meant something. People knew who you were, especially if you got to high level. You were, you know, you are, oh, that's that mage. X so-and-so. He helped me some... When I was in Stranglethorn Bale, getting ganked, let's invite him to this raid, even though he might not have the best gear. We can, we can give him a carry, because I know who he is. Happened to me like two weeks ago. I was playing... No, last week. I got into an AQ-20 raid. I have like three pieces of non-pre-raid bis, and I said, was honest with the guy. I said, listen, I'm, my gear isn't the greatest, but he knew me. And he, and he was like, oh, I, you know, you helped me out before, I'll give you a hand. And I wound up getting like a piece of gear actually, actually out of it. So, you know, what goes around comes around. It really, really does, and that it ha it's mirrors in real life. If you're if you're a horrible person to people, you will get horrible things will happen to you. It's just the way it is. I didn't write the book; it's just kind of the way it is. So, that is lesson number three. Lesson number four is to find your place in the world. You know, when you're when you're a kid, your parents tell you, you know, if you have good parents, some people don't are unfortunate, but a good parent will tell you, find your own way as long as you're doing something that makes you happy, as long as you're with people who love you that's the most important thing. And that's kind of the way WoW Classic is. To me, are there better specs than others? Absolutely. Are there better professions than others? Yes. Are better race combinations? Sure, absolutely. But, but, it's up to you to find your place in the world and become a member of society. You know, you have to go out there, get a job to make money. It's really hard to survive without, without a profession. Become your spec. Live that, you know, role play in, the, in what you are and and that's the role you have you know you, you find your niche in society you find your and you you do it um, so it's 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 it, you you know it, you're bringing something unique to either to the group you're in to the guild you're in you're bringing something unique you know I'm a you know troll mage Taylor Enchanter I'm a uh, I'm a rogue, uh, a sub rogue with enchanting and uh, I'm sorry, engineering and mining. Still, you know, those are important things that you're bringing to the table. And from a scientific standpoint, you know, we all have our discipline. We all study a certain discipline. Mine is biology. Another physicist, and I might be a physicist. But if, when I'm with other biologists, we have we have our specializations that we do. Right? I work with insects, genetics, and then another guy works with. Um, you know, uh, uh, molecular um, proteins structure. So I'm, if I have a question on that, if I'm writing a paper and it heavily has to do with the structure of some enzyme that, I'm, that I don't know about, I have to collaborate with this guy and, and he helps me write a, write a paper. Same thing in WoW. It teaches you how to be a team player um, and it teaches you, you know, you, you have to pick your niche, your place in the world. Are there, are there multiple instances of that niche? Sure, there's many mages that are trolls, that are frost, that have engineering and tailoring. But you may be the one of the few in your guild, or in your group at that moment. So, especially if server populations are capped at like 2,500 to 5,000, it's going to be even more relevant. So, find your place in the world, you know? And these, these are things I would tell a, a, my child, I don't have any kids yet, but this is something I would tell my, these life lessons are things that you can pull out of a video game, quote unquote, right? Pretty amazing. Step five, or, or lesson five, be happy with who you are. So, this is one of, the, one of the points that I think has clearly been removed from the game. With the addition of the barbershop, you're gonna laugh at me, right? But, when you create your character on that character creation screen, and you pick the hair color and the face and the skin color and all these things and the race, everything, you hit go, that's it. There's no way to change any of that. And you have to learn how to be happy with who you are. And that's the same in life. Right? You look in the mirror, you gotta be happy with that person in the mirror. If you're not happy with that person in the mirror, make some changes. But in while you know, you can only change so much. You can lose weight, you know, you can you can get gain muscle mass. You may be able to get yourself a, a you know a little beard and a shave. You can't change your skin color. You can't change your face. You know unless you want to pay for plastic surgery. 
But you shouldn't have to do that because you should be happy with who you are. And WoW reinforces that in the fact that you can't change your character, really. You know, until the position of the barbershop. So that's one aspect of you, you be happy with who you are. And the other parts are professions and specs. They're huge, gr professions are huge grinds, right? You, I just recently, I leveled, you know, skinning and mining, which is not the hardest profession to level by any, by any means, to 300. But I realized, okay, I made the money I wanted to do in these professions, and I switched my mage to tailoring and enchanting, because I want to be, I want to be the whole RP experience of mage, right? And I want to be that thing. So, and I got to grind them all the way up. Just like in, in real life, if I decide to leave biology and become like a, uh, an electrician, I have to go to electrical school, right? I don't know how to do electrical stuff unless somebody taught me, but that's not the case. I don't know anything about electricity. Same thing in, in WoW, guys. You can't, you know, it's, it's about hard work and dedication, okay? And the same thing with specs, specializations, right? Yeah, you can respect, but there's no dual talent specialization. There's no, oh, we, we're missing a tank in this raid here. Let me switch to tank. No, no, no there is none of that. Uh, you got to pay money. You gotta put the points in. You gotta like get your weapon skills up if you don't have weapon skills and that certain proficiency. And it teaches, and it's a grind. And it's a pain in the butt at the time, but it teaches you to be happy with who you are, um, and to really accept yourself and love yourself. And I think that's something you can pull from this game. Again, these aren't right in your face lessons. These are lessons that I've extracted from the game, or I think could be extracted from the game. The last one is to work hard, and good things will come. My mom always told me nothing in life, nothing good in life comes easy. Um, and that's exactly true for, for, for classic era WoW. Well. Um, you wanted to have <laughs> tier 2 raid gear? Well, you couldn't just LFR it, right? You had to go into BWL. You had to do it. You had to wait for these, you know, th three or four pieces to drop from a boss with 40 people. And you gotta win that piece. Nothing in good in life comes easy, you know, it's not, you can't just go kill a random mob in Mount, Hy well, not Mount Hydral, Val Shirai, I think, right, and get it just, oh, it dropped a legendary, <laughs> you know, that doesn't happen in Classic WoW, doesn't happen in real life. Yeah, are there lucky people? Absolutely. Yes, there are lucky people in raids, but what I'm saying is, for the most part, I've had to work for every single thing in my life that I have. I was never given anything, so I'm not, like, tooting my own horn, I'm just saying that for the vast majority of people in this world, you've been in my position. So, um, so, and then the retort to that is, but it's a game, it shouldn't be hard. Because life's hard enough, why do I want to play a game that's hard? Perfect argument. But again, to me, Classic Era WoW is not a game, it's an experience. And it's a, um, lifestyle choice. It, to me, it is. Um, so in conclusion, um, I just want to say that what I'm about to say is not I'm not preaching to you guys, I'm just giving you some advice. So, um, you know, Classic WoW is going to be launching soon, and if you've never played the game and you're part of this channel, I think this is a good way of getting yourself ready for uh, what life's going to be like in Classic WoW, or if you don't remember. Hopefully it's a similar experience. Hopefully they don't change too much. You never know what's going to happen, but it seems like most signs are pointing to minimal changes. Not, I won't say no changes. Um, but um, this, you know, a lot of these things make it sound like it's all good, right? These are all less perfect life lessons that come out of the game. But we have to make remember um, the caveat to all of this is this game is extremely addicting immersive and I think the most important thing to realize is even though you can get a lot of good things from this game um, your real life self deserves just as much if not more attention I would argue more attention and not just yourself your real life relationships uh, and I understand you might have something you don't you don't care for maybe in your family I'm not saying you have to go like hang out with that person all I'm saying is is that the real life relationships that you do have and want to keep you got to put time and effort towards that have to have to. And something you learn as you age. I'm older than probably most of my viewers. I'm not going to say all of you guys. Um, this is stuff that I wish I knew 10 years ago, you know, when I, before I lost people in my life that I'll never see again. So, like, you know, take the time. It's just, a, it, 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 it's not just a game, but on the other side, it is a game, okay? Um, 
and you can't die and come back in real life, okay? You can die and come back in WoW. Um, so it, there is a there's a fine line between it is a game, it isn't a game, right? And I think that you got to find that line for yourself and put a lot of energy towards you, you your relationships in real life, your job, your profession, school. These things are very, very important. Because you'll enjoy the game so much more if you're in, if you're in a position in your real life that you can relax and say, you know what, I did as hard as, worked as hard as I could today. I'm gonna play a little bit or play for ten hours, whatever. But get your stuff done. Get get that test done. Get a good grade. Go hang out with your dad. Go throw the ball around. Go hang out with your grandfather, or your grandmother. Right, and then you can always come back and play the game later. Because classic well, hopefully, is not going anywhere. We know it's going to be coming out. We know what. Expansion is going to be coming out. There's time. There's time to enjoy it. And that's another great thing about Classic Wild is that you can enjoy it at your own pace. Um, so the last thing I want to say is that you want if you're leveling up in the game, you want to level up in real life. I know I sound like your dad, and I'm sorry if I do that, but level up in real life. Whether it's at the gym, pushing more weight, running faster, running harder, running longer, or if it's uh, leveling up by getting a higher grade in your test, or getting a new job, getting that promotion, um, getting another degree, you gotta level up both. If you're leveling up here, you gotta level up here. That's my that's my philosophy on, on gaming. Level up in both. Are, are one go- is one gonna suffer? Are you gonna be able to play as much because you're leveling up here? Of course, if you're leveling up too much here, you won't be able to level up a lot here. You gotta bring it in the middle. So that's the only advice I'm gonna give you. Uh, sorry if I sound preachy, but again, there's six lessons that, that I've learned playing this game. Right here, these are the six lessons. And um, there's a lot more lessons to learn, I think. But again, just try to learn uh, balance. Everything must have balance, right? So yin, yang, all that stuff, whatever. Eastern philosophy. Anyway, guys, I had a great time doing this vlog. I really like doing these. Let me know if you do like them. Uh, I'll do do more. Um, They're kind of addictive for me because, again, it's a lot easier I don't have to plan as much. Uh, we're still be putting out content, game content. I'm just not saying we're not. I'm just saying that it's a lot easier for me to um, Super Bowl champions, by the way, to do th- this off the cuff. So let me know what you think. Love you guys. See you guys in game, and uh, just continue doing what you're doing as long as it's healthy. Have a great one, guys. See you later. Meldron signing off. Thank you.